hope this gets to be a more regular thing. We had one yesterday, and we got another one today. Um, uh, Masai has won the NBA's Executive of the Year. I think it's a fantastic honor for both himself and the organization, uh, continuing on from Coach Carl yesterday uh, to cap off a fantastic year. So without further ado, I'll present Masai with his award. And we've got to do a few photo ops, and then uh, Masai will be available for you guys. Thanks. I didn't, I didn't drop it. Oh, man. Uh, I, I, I've been thinking about how I start. I, start. Uh, I know it's, it's a little bittersweet uh, for me. Um, I, would, uh, I would trade that to be playing, uh, to be playing right now. Uh, but uh, eight years ago, I... I got the opportunity uh, to be a scout here, and uh, Mr. Cronkey gave me that uh, opportunity. And I would always come and uh, work out uh, early in the mornings, and Mr. Cronkey would be there and would talk about uh, every single thing from soccer, and he paid a lot of attention to, to soccer. Now we know why, but um, uh, he was... He would, he would talk about basketball and so many things, and to come back to this organization and for him to give me a chance, which I think um, I don't know anywhere else I'd have gotten a chance to be uh, to be here and be in this position. I I really I really appreciate it, and uh, he's he's been everything. Uh, I, I wish. Uh, Tomorrow we'll be setting up another press conference, and there will be another award for uh, for Josh Kroenke, uh, my president, because um, that guy is the real executive of the year, in my opinion. He he's led us. He's a leader, and he's been great to um, uh, such a great great person, uh, more uh, even than. Uh, giving me the opportunity, but giving all of us here um, a great, great opportunity. Uh, I think next I have to go to uh, my coaches, uh, George Carl. It's been, it's been unbelievable. Uh, these are the only guys I know, and they've been, uh, they, I think they've done a wonderful job. I think uh, our assistant coaches are the best in the league, and uh, to win 57 games says, uh, says everything for what uh, George has done for this uh, for this organization. Uh, to my to my staff, uh, I, I don't like saying too much about Pete because someday some some team will figure it out and they'll steal him from me, and then everybody will figure out how crap I am. <laughs> but. Uh, that's all I got to say about that guy. He's, 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 he's unbelievable. And uh, to work with him and Dan Tolzman and uh, Herb Livesey and Mike Bratt, nothing but the best. It shows uh, with some of the young talent that we've got. Um, they've, they work so hard. And then uh, with Amy and, and Lisa, they put up with me every day and see my different mood swings. <laughs> and I really thank them for uh, for the support and everything they do. Um, Mr. Kroenke didn't have to give me a chance. And uh, my background is scouting, and my background is the love of the game. And uh, tons of people that have really, really given me uh, great chances to be, uh, to be here. I, I also have to, this award is a little different. Uh, um, be, before I go and uh, go into the to the GMs, I wanted the players to be last, but I'm going to talk about our players. 
those guys play. And uh, the, for me, there's no individual award. I'd rather be playing right now uh, than, than have this. Um, this is a team sport, a team game. It's all of us. And bringing all of us together uh, to try and achieve a championship, which is for me is a bigger trophy than that. And that's the goal in Denver. That's, that's, that's what we want to do here. And we're a growing team. We'll continue to grow and we'll continue to, to get better. But after what we've been through for the last uh, three years and how uh, Josh brought this, this vision and Mr. Cronkey brought this vision of, hey, we have to, um, we have to start almost all over again. And um, let's figure out a way to get younger and get better. And these players come from Ty Lawson to Iguodala to Gallo and all these guys and play their butts off. Kenneth Fareed and JaVale McGee and all of them. And even the younger guys, they come here and work and uh, it's been a blessing. Like Coach always says, it's been unbelievable blessing working with these guys and I'm so proud of them. This thing is about our players and this thing is about uh, the opportunity that, that I've been given. Um, uh, the NBA gave me an opportunity uh, with David Stern and Adam being uh, so global. Uh, they gave me the opportunity uh, to, to work in basketball without borders, and uh, my continent means uh, so much to me. It's, um, it's, a big part of, uh, it's a big part of my life, and I appreciate Kim Bahoni and Amadou Fall uh, um, calling me and asking me to be the director of uh, basketball without borders borders about 10 years ago and continues to be a big part of my life. Um, I thank the GMs. Uh, this is a different vote from all the rest. I think they, um, this, is, this is done by the GMs uh, of the NBA. There's about, I don't know how many of the, these guys could have got these votes there. I, I think a lot of them uh, could have got a GM or executive or whatever it is of the year. Um, uh, they, as a, there's so many different schools of, of executives now, the younger guys from the Presties and Hennigans and Dell Demps and, and Ryan McDonough just got hired and the Neil O'Shea's and great basketball minds. And then uh, there's the, the mid guys like the Brian Colangelos and Billy Kings. And those guys are awesome. They are, they, um, they're they, they treat you so well. And then there's the old school guys. I always tell a story of uh, when Josh and I were working the, the mellow trade and we decided, hey, let's go, let's go see Donnie Walsh in, uh, in New York. And we walk into Donnie Walsh's office and he's sitting there on this chair and, and all, Josh and I are like this the whole time in, in awe basically of a person like that. And when Pat Riley or Kevin O'Connor or Mitch Kupchak or all these guys, uh, they pat you on the back and they say you're doing a good job. It, it means a lot. And uh, to learn from uh, the Brian Colangelos, who's, I think, you know, like one of the persons that really taught me in this business. And uh, Pete just told me uh, Wayne Embry won this, this thing twice, uh, who has been a great mentor to what Kiki and Mark Workentine and John Gabriel and all those guys uh, taught me. The Jeff Weltman, who gave me a chance in, uh, to come here and work under him as a scout. I, I, I can't even uh, say enough. I'm sorry I'm rambling, but I really need to, to, to thank these people. Um, lastly, I thank my family, uh, my lovely wife. Uh, she puts up with me <laughs> every day um, when I throw stuff on my TV. Uh, she's there. She cleans it up. Uh, but... Um, uh, it's a blessing. I, I, I support 100% what George says. We family and friends are everything in this, in this business. And my best friend is here and my family. And I, I, I regret because I was going to fly my, my mom and dad in for the second round. But you know what? Next season is here. And next season, the second round will be here. And I, I know for sure that in our minds, in the coaches' minds, with ownership from, from Stan Kroenke to Josh Kroenke to all of us that work together. Uh, that's our goal. There was an unbelievable energy in this city, uh, and that's kind of why we had a little bit of a disappointment when, um, uh, when uh, we lost uh, to the Golden State 
Warriors, who is not such a bad team uh, from what uh, from what they are doing uh, right now. They're not. Give them credit. They're not too bad. Uh, we hope to kick their butts next year, but uh, they're not too bad right now. Um, uh, other than that, uh, I appreciate you guys coming coming out. Uh, the fans have been great. Uh, I, I think uh, the whole uh, KIC, this organization, I think has been um, has been unbelievable. Uh, Jim Martin, uh, all you guys upstairs, I appreciate you guys travel when I give you like no time to uh, to to do my flights. I appreciate you putting up with me, uh, but everybody here has been supportive and the city has been great and we continue, we will continue to uh, take this energy uh, into the off season, get our players better and uh, do do whatever we have to do uh, to to get better. We are a growing team, we understand that and we knew there were going to be pains. This is, this is part of the process and we'll, con we'll continue to grow. So uh, thanks guys and I'll take whether it's end of season questions or I haven't had any um, feedback with you guys or um, interaction with you guys, but uh, any questions you want to ask me, I, I'm here to answer, except you. <laughs> I think you've told the story before, but can you just kind of remind people where you started in Orlando? I think you said you were an unpaid scout. and. Can you describe just how far you've come since that time? Uh, yeah, you know, this, this opportunity, is, uh, it, it, it doesn't come very often. And I, I was um, uh, looking to go into college coaching or scouting, and I was working with the Nigerian national team. And uh, David Thorpe, who is a, um, who's been a very influential person in, in, uh, uh, in my life and helping me in my career, um, uh, introduced me to a lot of um, college coaches, and uh, I went. I took one of our Nigerian players for a workout in Orlando, and uh, John Gabriel uh, took the player in, and and I had to wait outside. I wasn't even allowed into the practice facility, and um, um, I went to lunch later on. And the next uh, the next thing I know is a player I had canceled. Uh, coming for a workout the following day. This was during uh, draft workouts, and um, John Graber asked me if I would bring the player back. The player actually happened to be Uche Osonwu, who played in uh, who played in Wyoming, and I brought him back, and they allowed me into the facility, and that's where I met John uh, John Gabriel properly, and I met Doc Rivers, and they said they had heard that uh, I knew a lot about international basketball, and they allowed me. Uh, to uh, to come the next day, and they asked me if if I would. Uh, John Gabriel asked me if I would uh, like to do some work for the uh, for the Orlando Magic, and gave me his number and told me to call him. And I called him, I think, every day for like eight months. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, I got that that chance. And I think it was one of the, it was at the time when uh, John was unfortunately kind of on his way out and he couldn't employ me full time and that's when uh, Jeff Weltman and and Kiki gave me the chance and uh, Stan Kroenke hired me here. I can hear you. Masai, would you uh, consider this very good timing since your contract is up and uh, you're going to get another deal done here soon? Uh, I have a lot of teams in Lagos that want me in Nigeria that want me. So no, this is this for me. It's not. Uh, there's no timing in this. Uh, the, uh, Josh and I have continued to have conversations, and I'm very, I'm very positive that things will work out. Hey, Masai, can you put into words just the importance and the privilege of of being the first African-born uh, general manager in major American sports to to have this award? And I know you said. It's talked about a little bit earlier, but can you just expand on just how much that means to you, thinking where you came from to where you're sitting right this moment? Uh, you know, you, the way I look at these things is it, it doesn't, uh, I can't just have this position and, 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 and have that line, the first African to win this award or to have this position. You have, you have to do something, and to me, you have to win. 
in, in, in this business. You have to win. There's, the, there's, there's no other options than winning. And winning helps me in the continent of Africa. Uh, just having it by my name doesn't help me. Yeah, I could be the first and the, and the last. I have to, uh, I, I almost have to create uh, the opportunity uh, for other people there. And uh, I'll continue the MBA, and I think David and Adam have done a great job of spreading the word and giving us a chance to to do what we do in Africa and develop the game there. But um, as, as the first African GM, or so-called first African GM, I have to produce. And by producing uh, and by winning and uh, that will change things over there, and that will give me an opportunity. Yeah, this helps. You know, it, it's going to help me a little bit here and there, and I, I'm definitely uh, proud of it. Uh, my my parents have. Uh, I'm proud of what my my parents have done. They they mean so much to me. Uh, uh, but I, I I have a lot of work to do um, to uh, to help people over there and uh, to help to help grow the game over there before I can say. Uh, I'm the first African GM or the first person to win this award. And then just for people that don't know, can you just put into words briefly what Basketball Without Borders is, your role with it, and, and how it's growing every year? Uh, so Basketball Without Borders is obviously the initiative the, the NBA started with. Uh, uh, we bring 100 kids uh, from all over Africa. Uh, we've been doing this, I think, since 2003. But Basketball Without Borders itself started... Um, I think a few years before that in Europe with Vladi and, um, and Peja Stakovic and all those uh, great European, European players. But uh, I was assigned, I got that call from Kim Bohoni when they started the initiative came of doing this thing in Africa. And uh, we had to travel around Africa um, alongside Amadou Fall uh, and select kids. And I was made the director of, of, of the camp. And we bring these kids to South Africa. Uh, we bring coaches from America, uh, bring NBA players, uh, go into the community there, and um, uh, it's, a, it's an unbelievable event. Um, and these players don't know each other. They don't know anything about uh, – uh, they've never met an NBA player. They've never really been coached, and you spend three, four days, and um, they get to do so many things that they haven't done in their lives. And there's so many of them playing in college basketball now. It's a, it's a very successful uh, initiative. Masai, when you look at when you first got here and, and took over trying to get guys to come here and to where that point is now, are you seeing a difference in, in guys more excited about coming to Denver than perhaps in the past? Uh, yes, and yes, and no. Uh, for me, I, I think uh, one of the things we've discussed with, uh, with, with, with Josh is we have to make, a, a, and also Coach and, and Mr. Kroenke, we have to make this place um, attractive to players, too. We can't sit down here and cry, small market, big market, all that. I don't want to say it on, uh, on here, but yeah, okay, those, those guys are in New York, they're in L.A., they're in Miami, so what? We should cry here in Denver, uh, what, that, what? We can't get players? There's tons of players in the world, and I'm telling you they will come here eventually. I think there are trends in the NBA. That's what I always say, and uh, yeah, okay, players at one point that will go to New York, will go to Miami, will go to all these places. That's fine and dandy. Uh, the, there were... The trend at one point was high school players. The trend at one point was um, uh, European players. They, the, the NBA has different trends, and I think that was, that's a trend now. What happens in two, three years? We have to attract the Eagle Dollars. We have to keep the Gallos and grow the, the Ty Lawsons and all these players here, the Wilson Chandlers and the JaVale McGee's. We have to grow our own players and believe in ourselves. And then you know what? Iguodala is going to look at it and say, you know what, I want, I want to play in Denver. Uh, players are going to look at it. Our system, our coach, our, the way we play, the style of play, it's attractive. And uh, we're going to transform that into, into winning big time. And that's, that, that's, what we, that's what we want to do here. So um, I've never believed in all that. Uh, yeah, we went through a phase. Yeah, and yeah, we suffer in little things here and there. But that's all excuses to me. We, we, have, we have a job to do here, and that's to bring players and to grow the game here. Masai, because you've mentioned Andre's name twice, do you anticipate Iguodala being back next year? 
whether it be on the current deal or a new deal? Uh, we're going to discuss, and uh, I'm very, very optimistic that, that things are going, things will go well. Uh, I think he grew um, as the year uh, as the year went on, and he began to play better. And I think he's uh, a great kid, and I think he's great for our basketball. He brings um, he brings a there's, there's a lot he brings to our to our program, and uh, we're proud of him of the year he had, and we hope. Um, we auditioned ourselves well for uh, for him, and that's going to be his decision. We'll do everything on our part um, uh, as an organization. We want we want him back. And then to follow up, what changes do you foresee, whether it be roster wise, staff wise, front office wise? Are there any big changes, small changes that you can foresee at this point? Well, I think all of us are getting together and we're still um, assessing it. Uh, there are, I think things went wrong. At, with, uh, there are things we did wrong as management. There are things, things didn't go right with, uh, uh, with, with players. Things didn't go right with coaching. And that, that's, for us, it's an organization, and we all have to take responsibility. And we're all going to come together and uh, see what... Um, the problems are we've already started having meetings, uh, meetings with coaches, meetings with, in the front office, and um, we've got, I think, we're beginning to get over our emotional uh, state stage. Uh, and I didn't start watching basketball games till, till yesterday night. And you know what? We have to move on, and we have to stand up and, and take responsibility and uh, attack the next year. Yesterday, when, when Coach Carl got the award, he thanked everyone else, didn't talk about himself a whole lot. You did the same thing. You spent over 10 minutes talking about all these people who have done so much. Is that kind of what you guys are talking about with what makes this organization grow is the fact that no one wants to take credit for these awards? Outsiders are giving you, you, you give credit to the people inside the organization. Well, I, I wish when I was younger I played tennis or I ran track so I can do whatever I want as an individual. This is a team sport. And I think um, uh, it's very gracious of, of George, uh, I think, uh, uh, to do that. For me, uh, it starts from the top and what the opportunity you get. And uh, the, Mr. Kroenke has given us all this opportunity, and we have to work. It's a team, it's a team sport, and everybody takes responsibility, and... Um, we're all happy when we win. We all win together. We all lose together. Um, that's why. That's why it's a team sport. Uh, so um, I can I can go home and brag to my wife how good I am. That's <laughs> that's all I can do. <laughs> um. 57 wins was awesome. The playoffs was frustrating. What what have you guys, now that you've had like a week or so, what have you learned from what happened in the playoffs? And I mean, there's no quick fix, but heading forward, knowing that you'll be in the playoffs next season, is there some things that maybe need to be changed or is it, it was just a bad matchup? Uh, I think it was a combination of a lot of things. And uh, like I said, yeah, it's been a week, but we're all still kind of uh, trying to gather uh, everything uh, that we think um, went wrong, but uh, bad matchup. We can give every excuse, you know, like in in the in the world. And uh, I remember I'm um, with our scouts in Chicago at the pre-draft. Uh, sorry, at the McDonald's game a uh, few weeks ago, or about a month ago, and um, we're playing in. Uh, we're playing in Utah, and I'm watching uh, the game on on my iPad. And McDonald's is going. I shouldn't say that because Josh uh, should be pissed at me. I wasn't watching the game, <laughs> but I was watching our, our game on my iPad. And and it's the Utah game, and uh, Gallo hits those threes, and he does the whatever he does, <laughs> and. Everybody is doing it on the bench, and we're all talking about it. Uh, my scouts are there, and such a great, you know, like moment for us because as he's doing this, we're, we're beating Utah. It's a big game for us. Uh, everybody's pumped up. Our team is like this. 
um, and such a big win for uh, for us at the time. And I come home, it's a, off a back-to-back, and I think we're playing Dallas the next day, and the guy tears his ACL the next day. That's that's sports, and that's what that's that's a tough part of 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 the business. And we can stay here and give all the excuses we want, but all of us have to re- take responsibility now. And you know what? Uh, our goal is to uh, to be better and to be better in the playoffs. And and I think uh, we're going to do everything to uh, to do that. It's hard to believe it's only it's still less than three years since you were hired here and you probably came in with kind of a vision where are you in just a short period of time and kind of what you wanted to do with this franchise well josh said to me uh, uh, the other day is he, he's like it's really the first year that that uh, we can really assess our team and evaluate you know like the like the team that we've we've, we've tried to build and um First year, there was the whole chaos and uh, the, the whole um, drama that went on then. Uh, the second year was the unfortunate um, uh, lockout year. And so there was, there was a lot of unanswered questions and things we needed to patch up, you know, for the time being or, or, and kind of look ahead. Uh, and so this year has been a good year for us for, to actually like watch and see. And uh, we are the third youngest team in the NBA. Where we feel like we will continue to grow as a team. There's there's many things we have to learn um, a, in in every step in the organization. And I think um, we'll get we'll get better. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys this year. Thank you.